Hi, Amina. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing really good. Thanks for asking. As you know, I nominated you for 40 Fast, which is meant to give recognition for directors in the periop world and excelling. Naturally, I thought you were a great candidate for this, given your experience and how quickly you reached the director level, not to mention your unwavering positive attitude and charisma. So with that being said, why don't you tell our audience your name, current role, and where you're working? All right, so my name is Amina Arkan. Um, it's actually said Amina Arjan, but um, I'm the director of operations slash administrator slash director of nursing of Central Arizona Endoscopy. And recently, your center has been in the news, hasn't it? And I think that is worth mentioning. Why don't you tell me about that? So we just recently received um, a very prestigious award, which was um, being nominated or actually being seen as um, one of America's best ambulatory surgical centers by Newsweek. And we are so honored. That it's, is it's, amazing. It's a huge accomplishment. Yes, I definitely think it is. And I thought it would be worth mentioning and sharing with everybody. So let's dive into the questions. The first one is, did you have a mentor and how did they help you? And are you currently mentoring anyone? So um, I would say that my two mentors currently are my VP of, of operations, which is Raymond Hino. Um, who truly brought out the in inner potential in me. Um, he saw something in me that I believe a lot of others um, didn't see. And, and he's brought so much light to me in my career in general. Um, also, my previous clinical director, John, um, John is clinical, so he is just a wealth of knowledge because he has a ton of experience. And both of these people do a really good job of, you know, talking to you through issues, um, but in a way so that you can solve it in your own way. Um, as for people that I mentor, I feel like I mentor all of my staff. Um, I believe that true leaders create more leaders, not followers. Um, I carry that mindset daily. And my mission is to create more leader, more leaders um, within my staff. That's awesome. I love that, that true leaders don't create followers. They create more leaders. I love that. Um, the second one is, in your experience, how much communication is ideal between you and your boss that helps with day-to-day -day activities? So this is a tricky one because I wouldn't say that there is an ideal amount. I would say um, quality over quantity matters most here. I myself am very transparent with everybody, whether it's my boss, the board, or my staff. Um, obviously problems are inevitable, so being transparent and communicating what's going on with the center in general is key to keeping things running smoothly. Um, so I truly make sure that everyone knows what is going on with the center 24 seven. Yeah, I, I, I love that answer. Um, the next one is, do you often find yourself thrown into antiquated systems or policies and how do you try to phase them out? Um, so I feel that healthcare is composed of antiquated systems and policies in general. <laughs> Obviously, um, there are policies that I cannot change. So um, I change a lot of policies and systems during COVID um, to ensure the safety of my employees, patients, and their loved ones. Um, I also feel that healthcare IT, the healthcare IT space has expanded rapidly over the past decade and investing into supporting applications and removing duplicative technologies is a must. Um, I feel that we have many duplicative technologies, particularly when it comes to data and analytics. And I believe that streamlining those would have consistent data and lead to a more efficient and better business. 
as well as, you know, better clinical decisions. Um, I recently implemented and converted my center um, from an on-premise EMR system, which requires an infrastructure footprint to a cloud-centric EMR system, which in my opinion is more reliable and cost-effective. Um, health systems that fully leverage the cloud and other modern technology don't have to build their own servers or manage their own data centers. So for me, converting to a cloud-based system has not only had positive implications to our cost, it also has had so many positive implications to our solution to architecture, and it has given us the ability to deliver a more faster, more secure, and overall a better user experience across the board. While there is no specific path to becoming a director, what steps or training do you recommend? What, where in that process can there be improvement? Where, what are the growing pains? So I, um, I didn't do any specific training to become a leader. Um, my experiences are what brought me here. Um, as a young nurse, I was put into, you know, charged roles. Um, then I became nurse specialist. Um, and then, uh, you know, chief of nursing. Um, all of these experiences and growth in these roles are why I am currently in the position I am today at just 32 years old. Um, I believe that when you're called to lead, you're called to serve. And I believe that same statement when I became a nurse. Um, it's a mindset that cannot be taught. Um, I will say, though, there is a lot of training that individuals who already are leaders can access that can help refine their skills. Um, I took an ASC Administrator Bootcamp course by none other than John Goyle himself, who is an ASC industry leader, and I felt that that was very useful to me. What investment would you like your C-suite to make that will create a more efficient and profitable OR? So I feel that our center is already very efficient. Um, I'm very thankful that we have access to so many resources, especially during, during COVID. It, it, it's been hard, um, but we still do have access to a lot of things. Um, so, I, you know, you have to think outside the box. Now, do I wish that we, you know, could invest into brand new scopes and equipment? Sure. I think anyone could say that, but overall, um, we do have everything we need. In terms of investing, um, I wish to invest more into social media, our website and marketing, which is what I have been and am continuously working on, because ultimately that's, that's what brings in business. Um, we live in a new era. Um, in this last year, I was able to increase our Google reviews from a 1.2 stars to a 4.6, and it has increased traffic to our center tremendously. Um, I know this because of the data and analytics that I track continuously. Um, I myself look up a place, and especially a healthcare place that I'm going to, so I'm able to see what makes them stand out. Um, patients or people in general want to come to a place that has, that has a good reputation and good reviews and that were given by other patients. Um, at times, these include negative ones as well, which um, as an organization, this should be taken very seriously um, and taken into consideration um, because it, it's a way to improve the process. Um, they're important to have and an opportunity for a leader or an organization to utilize their advantage because no place or organization is perfect. There needs to be a bigger focus on marketing. And I believe with what I've done with ours proves just exactly that. Yeah, I would say so. That is quite the turnaround from one point to over four stars. That is Thank outstanding. You. And Thank the fact you. that it's brought in, you know, more profit to your center, that's even better. That's the cherry on top. 
Uh, the next one is, what is your 2022 wish list for your OR, and what are you going to do to achieve those goals? I think my wish list would be to keep the current staff that I have because I feel that we're such a great team and I would be absolutely nothing without them. Um, we work extremely well together. To achieve that, I do want to raise pay and do more group activities outside of work. And um, I want to take care of them because I value and appreciate them. People who are and who are valued and feel appreciated do more than what is expected. Um, this also aids in the retention, something that is now a known problem across all healthcare, especially with the devastation of the pandemic. Yeah, I would say, I mean, our, you know, women partners, our whole purpose is to fill these positions, which goes to show that retention is a problem, right? And that is, that is just amazing that you feel that you and your team are tight knit and that that's your wish list. Most people would probably say something related to metrics or equipment or something like that, but that just goes to show that your your character is with your people and you, that's where your heart is. So that's awesome. Thank you. I appreciate uh, that. Yeah. The next one is what advice do you have for your younger self? I would tell myself to trust the process. There will always be roadblocks that really discourage you from chasing after a dream or accomplishing a goal. But those roadblocks are there to challenge you. The only way to grow is to be challenged. So every roadblock that you hit is actually just an opportunity to learn and grow. That could not be more true. I totally agree with that. And the last one is, what do you consider your superpower? Oh, God. Um, <laughs> I would say... Um, that my superpower is my ability to relate and connect to others. As a leader, my ability is to relate to my staff, physicians, reps, third party companies, other leaders, and so on. Um, and it's unprecedented. Um, it allows me to truly connect with them, build relationships with them, which are very important to me. Um, the close relationships that I have with my staff and physicians allows me to see what they need. And I make sure to deliver it. Um, and my staff trusts me and knows that they can come to me with anything. It's because of the relationships I've built with them by being sensitive to their needs and understanding of their problems. Um, I make an effort to not only listen, but solve or help them solve through the problems they're having the best that I possibly can. Um, I make sure to maintain a high and healthy sense of self-awareness as well, um, which allows me not only to look at myself and improve upon myself, but also see the need of others and particularly my staff um, to empower them, believe in themselves and know that what is inside of them is greater than any obstacle. I would definitely say that that answer right there explains exactly why you are where you are at today. Um, that is exactly what I feel anyone would be looking for in a leader. So that is awesome. I appreciate you taking the time to talk to me and doing this interview. It means so much. And yeah, thanks so much. I really do appreciate it. Thank you for your time and thank you for the nomination. And um, I, I, I truly appreciate it. I'm, I'm so honored.